Here's a simple technique for making solid wood look like individual boards. This technique works in multiple scales and can even be used on furniture like tabletops. I will be showing this technique on a 148 scale floor. The first step is determining how wide I want my boards to be. I'm marking my dots at 1 8 inch, which is 6 inches wide in 148 scale. Once I make my dots, I make some more on the other side and then I connect these lines and these are my horizontal running boards for my floor. Right now this room looks like it's filled with long single pieces of boards so I'm drawing these little lines at various lengths to indicate individual planks. I staggered the butt ends of my board so there wouldn't be a repeating pattern but you can choose whatever layout you would like. For realism and dimension, I am taking my X-Acto knife and cutting on the right side of one of my pencil lines, and then I cut at an angle on the other side, like a V-shaped channel, to fake a space between the boards. To give you a closer look and a better idea of the cut I'm doing, I painted a piece of matte board red. I'm using my blade at a slight angle on one side of the line I drew and then I flip the blade to a similar angle and cut the other side. It creates the illusion of a gap between the boards. I use the same cutting technique to cut the butt ends of the boards where the boards meet. Cutting the gaps between the boards is the key to creating this illusion of separate boards. I used the same type of cut on all of the pencil lines I drew. In order to create some more rustic charm for these floors, I'm using that same type of cut at the butt ends where the boards meet. I'm using the knife at an angle to cut these narrow wedges. They kind of look like elongated pizza slices, and you can see that this makes the boards look a lot older. Next, I cut off the corners of the boards in some places to make them look even more weathered. I finished all of the aging with the X-Acto knife and I absolutely love the way the floors look, but now we need some stain. I'm using brown acrylic paint as stain. Since I'm working with a thin piece of wood, I'm trying to minimize warping by not adding water to my paint, so I'm using the paint full strength. The brown looks good full strength, but I still want the stained look. So I'm taking a damp paper towel and scrubbing away at the paint to give this flooring a worn, weathered look. I scrubbed the other side of the floor and moved on to the next step. I love all the details we created with the X-Acto knife and now we're emphasizing them with some dry brushing. I've been showing close-up comparisons after each step so you can decide if there are any steps you want to skip for your own floors or furniture. After dry brushing, I sealed it with matte Mod Podge, which was a little chunky, but it worked out. The thin wood did take a little bit of a warp, so I'm pinning it down with my 123 blocks while it dries. Once it dried, I gave it a simple black wash with some watered down paint. The black wash provides some added depth for the cracks. Check out my Dollar Tree video to see this technique on a tabletop and the witch's cottage where I used this finished floor.